wife and my kids were. And about once a month, twice a month, I would drive from uh, Albuquerque to Grand Junction to go see my kids and my wife. And I would usually do this on a Thursday, Friday, come back on a Monday. And um, it was, it was uh, in December, I remember that because it was cold and there was a little bit of snow on the ground. And I was, um, <laughs> I, I was driving from Albuquerque to Grand Junction and um, I had taken a different course than what I usually drove. I uh, drove this time instead of going over the passes over Red Mountain Pass and Colbeck and Mola's Pass, um, I decided because they were snowed in uh, to go through Cortez and Monticello and then the back way through Utah and then up into Grand Junction, Colorado. And um, I, I don't know, it must have been, it was kind of early in the evening. Um, I had been on the road all through most of the day and uh, the sun had set and it was not long after that that um, uh, I noticed that um, there was this set of lights. I, I, I did notice that they were following me. It was just I just caught it in my rear view mirror, uh, the one that's down in the car. And um, the biggest thing that I noticed about it was that me being in television, uh, I've been used to using colored lights, gels, different things like that. And I just noticed that there was a brilliant hue in these lights that I'd never seen before. And there were two colors that were in particular, and one of them was magenta and the other one was a cyan and they were very prominent and um, I couldn't tell you if there were three, four, five, six lights I just I couldn't focus it was just like there was a, a blur or something but um, these lights followed me uh, and then they seemed to jump ahead and then kind of lead me or go in front of me and uh, there were, it set about, I don't know, as, as, it, as if I was to look out the windshield of the car, it set right about at that eye level. And there. This went on for a while, and I was just intrigued by it more than I was scared, more I, 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 I didn't even think it was a UFO or anything, I just thought it was very unusual. And um, then it just disappeared, it just stopped. And it wasn't like all of a sudden it just flew away or just, it just was just not there anymore. And so I, I went home, I didn't really think a whole lot about it except it was kind of neat. I told my wife, at the time that I'd seen this, and she was, you know, kind of joking around about it, and uh, um, just kind of put it back in the file of my mind, and never really thought uh, much about it. And then um, it was about a month later. Um, I was coming home, same trip. The mountains were snowed in again, so I took the back path up through Utah. And I'll be darned if it didn't show up again. Um, and this time it was a little different. Um, these, light, these lights were some sort of craft. Uh, I got kind of a better look at it this time because it hung around. And instead of just going in front of me and staying behind me, it actually would be at the side of me now. And it, would, it was on both sides at different times. It was... It was like it was moving around me in different rotations, uh, but but I just kept traveling on down the road, and uh, it got a little concerning this time because it seemed to get a little closer, and um, it it well it just seemed to get closer, 
And then there was, and, and I was, I was get, getting a little concerned over all of this. Um, so for some reason, I just decided to pull over the side of the road and see what it was. Um, I didn't have any fear towards that, but I just had a desire to see what this thing was. So I pulled over the side of the road, and I sat in the car. I, I don't know how long uh, I sat there. Um, and um, this craft, and, and I say craft, this craft, it was like right out on the left hand, on my left hand side of my car. And it just stayed there. It didn't float up. It didn't float down. It didn't float left or right. It just stayed there. And I was just amazed by this. And so um, what I did was um, I decided I was going to get out and get a better look at it. And that's really kind of the last thing I remember except for the fact I remember reaching down and touching the and grabbing hold of the uh, uh, the door handle and I remember the door opening up and then it was like not like a it was not like this beam of light was sh was sh shine down on me or laser it was like the whole inside of the car and everything just was filled with light. It was, it was, and that's really the last, I, 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 that, that's really the last that I remember of the whole deal. I don't even remember how I got home that night. Well, um, like I said, I've read books occasionally over the last 50 years, and uh, but when, once I saw the sighting in uh, 2000, and I know we don't have any craft that can do that. I mean, there are no wings. This was purely a cigar-shaped object, and uh, uh, smooth as, I mean, it looked to be totally smooth, uh, and it appeared to be radiating its own light source. I just don't believe we have anything like that. So I started reading. And today, just to the left of me here, there's over 200 books on UFOs. And since then, uh, after I, I waited till after I uh, left the government because I was in a security job and I didn't want my sanity questioned. Um, but I joined MUFON after I retired, and uh, and I have become certified as an investigator for them. And I have I'm a new investigator, but I've already investigated three cases. Right after I saw it, or where it was over. Right after it was over. Uh, I was, I was, I was. Let's put it this way: I was ready to get, get in bed and just go to sleep. I got dressed and ready to go. I thought I was going to get in my car and drive out of there because I didn't know what was coming next. I was so I was ready to leave. So I was a little bit nervous. I think it was more excitement because what was interesting is I went and talked to some of my friends that I knew for like 20 years, you know, and uh, I went down to Boulder and, uh, well, I was in Boulder, but I was up in North Boulder, and I went downtown to my friends and I said, hey, look, I saw this, this UFO last night and it was really impressive. And my buddy had this, this a friend of hers there and she goes, she goes, you did? And I go, yeah. She goes, I just saw one just the other night. And I, and I says, what did it look like? And then this lady commenced to explain it to me. And, and tell me exactly what the colors were, and it was identical. The same orange lights, the same red dome in the rear of this craft, and, and it was right up there in North Boulder is where she lived. And I was, I was, I was taken back by that. It's very interesting. And then I've heard other people also were seeing this same um, craft. Granted, it wasn't a real big craft, but it was still the size of a house, and it didn't make a single noise, and it moved, of course, very quickly. Oh, they haven't really affected. I don't get that excited about it, except that it's it's interesting. I think that these things are outside our area of influence. You know, people in in society can't really do that much about it. And you know, they're not coming and knocking on my door and introducing themselves. They're not paying my taxes. 
they're not helping me, you know, achieve immortality or anything like that. They're not my buddies. <laughs> so what can I do? And whether or not they're even from some other place, who knows what they are? We could speculate that they're from some other place. It could be a, a black government project. It could be anything. So I think the door is open on it. Uh, I, th I believe that we're definitely not alone in the universe. I think that it would be arrogant to assume that. But it's also arrogant to assume that it's one specific thing. I think we have to take in consideration that there's many, f many possibilities on these things. And I believe it is actually many possibilities. I think they come from other places, maybe other dimensions, maybe even other times. And I think that time will tell. Eventually they'll tell. I know there's a lot of... of uh, in frequency of, of these events taking place around the world. And they seem to be becoming more and more intense. Uh, and eventually, maybe, we'll find out within our lifetime. It'd be great if we could find out within our lifetime. And it's not something horrific. Maybe it's something okay, and we can deal with it. So for me, it hasn't really affected me, other than it's very fascinating. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm always watching, keeping my eyes open, and hopefully I can catch something. It'd be nice to catch something on film that was actually you know, you could actually see it, and it wasn't just a spot of light in the dark. It'd be great. It was really crazy to me because they were coming out of the ground, and it didn't seem like anything that you would think that you would see, like a lights in the sky. Like, I, it was during the daytime, I could see the structure of the craft, and it was very distinct. Well, it's made me look up a lot more. I, I'm, I find myself stargazing a lot. Um, and I also find myself wanting to talk to other people who've had experiences, reach out and, and sort of let people know that, like, this is what I believe. I believe there's something out there. I don't know what it is, but there's something. I, I believe it's um, now more than ever that uh, that I should tell people, and that's you know why I'm doing this because I think people should know. And if they do or have seen it, then they should know that there's a lot of other people out there that have seen it too. I don't remember how long it was in the light. Um, there's just this. Thing that went on, so I don't know. I don't know what to say from there. I've never, um, I've never had another experience. Um, I do have one thing that's very, very weird, and that is that whenever I, and, and I don't watch them purposely. I don't really watch these UFO shows that are like the Discovery Channel, but every they call them uh, the Greys, the big cranial type. I get this really, and it's like right now, I get this really, really sick feeling. Is that because of uh, the, the sense of the presence? or I don't know. I have not been able to explain it. But I get this really sick feeling whenever sometimes I see those images or those you know okay so I don't know I don't know